We're back again, boys and girls. Welcome to Game Three of Omega versus R. Wait, Blacklist International. Um, two games have passed, have elapsed. We've watched both of them, and you guys can go check it out if you haven't. Obviously, also please do leave a like on the video. Comment down below what you guys think about any of the op opinions that I made. Maybe something I missed. Obviously, there I'm human. There's probably something that I've missed um, in these games that you guys have spotted and you guys can tell me. And maybe if you guys disagree with my opinion as well, you can tell me why you disagree. We can have a healthy discussion in the chat about, you know, just the game itself. Very, very cool. But now it's time to just play the video. Oh, Omega Bando 1 1 this time. They leave out the Faramis. It's game one. It's literally game one. It's literally just game one. But they swapped in a few heroes like lolita claude they pick it up after Faramis. and um from game one blacklist went for esme esme and beatrix they went for bauman beatrix this time they prioritized the jungle then it's esme lilia what's julian last pick then it's paquito and cho Again, it's pretty even across the board, but I want to say the fair miss plays such a big role anytime. It's, it's Kelra versus Venus again, just like in game one. If the Blazing Duet is placed properly, Cult Alter, non factor. Yeah. Okay, so they banned these parts, they took this. Let's just put it together. Yeah. We have a split. Let's yeah. put it together. Yeah, it's, it's solid by Leo, too. He said that it's um, game three is a mix and mash of game one and game two. Uh, Omega's draft. Yep. Except the, the XP laner because it's Ismay. They, they picked up Dire off two games in a row. But this time they're looking for more sustain in that XP lane. Because they already have enough DPS and burst. Let's see again. Kelra versus Oheb rematch. I think in all three of the match, uh, all two of the matchups so far, um, one one Beatrix and Claude Beatrix, in game one and two, Kelra has one in lane. So we'll do, we'll see again, and now we'll pay extra attention to the gold lane, just to see how he does it. Ooh, good flicker burn. Have as much impact as ah, he did in yeah. games this time Oheb winning. See, this is this is what I expected in game one. Beatrix versus Claude. Beatrix has um, the upper hand when it comes to those early skirmishes. Early, yeah. Once uh, Kelra gets level four, he has more kind of more a bit more kill pressure. But Kelra is playing with the with the pockets of vision really well. Like um, in the bushes, back, going back and forth, getting a cheeky little first ability, using the BMI to back off. He's just doing that constantly. Uh, it's very frustrating for the Beatrix. Playing with the, the poke from Max yeah, as well, right? yep. they want to force good response by Wise. They noticed that the anything else, so it does go back to your point. Okay. Wolf, can they do the same thing with Ryzen, but now in the middle Oh no, no. Haji no flicker. Ooh, GG. Not GG, but first blood. GG to E2 Max. That was really good. And Ryzen. Dude, ban Ryzen on Julian. A ban to Julian, man. He's too good on Julian. God damn. He's really good on Julian, dude. Yeah, early game, Julian is insane. Um, guys, bros, so don't try to fight Julian early. Like, late he's also a menace, don't get me wrong, but early game, especially level 3, if you guys aren't familiar with Julian, if you, if you guys don't face Julian a lot, you're... It's such a throw-off because he gets that ultimate technically in level 3, right? He doesn't have an ultimate technically. It's all there. Level 3, enhanced. They can, it's everything. Just the enhanced thing. You know, you know. If, you, if you know, you know. And this is kind of a force by Omega. I mean, by, by Blacklist. My bad. It's kind of a force. It's a good steal. Like, they do get the steal, but... Oh, wait. Hmm. That was actually worth it, I think. In the end. I thought they forced it. Let me just watch it again. What happened exactly? Because I looked at this initial play and I was like, yeah, that, they kind of forced it. It's a two for two. Is it worth it? Is it worth it? 
Yeah, yeah, it is. Okay, it is worth it for Blacklist. It is worth it for Blacklist. Damn, them they made it worth that fight. I didn't think that they would have won. Uh, they would be able to actually look for any more kills there. That was a good fight. Yeah, uh, that was a really good fight. And that's when it's good. Uh, when I, as a caster slash analyst, I guess um, I can't predict um, what's going on there. I can't predict what the, the outcome. That just shows that, you know, it's it's very competitive. Both teams are fighting back. And what, it, like, initially looked like Omega's victory, it's it's not going to end as Omega's victory entirely sometimes in those scenarios. Yeah, this is something that they've, they've been doing, right? Every time... They always try to give Renzio a winning lane. Esme versus Paquito, Dyroth versus Esme. Dyroth versus Paquito was a bit like... I actually think Paquito wins in that one, but he was able to make work, make it work because they already have a winning lane in the bottom side with 1-1 Beatrix. So yeah, they, they always swap it really well. They never have two, strong, two weak sides, Omega. And I'm excited to see more because this time it seems like Omega are going to be up and up the tempo. They play Lilia and... And by the way, weak side means like the lane that in terms of matchups should win. And because it should win, uh, the team rotates towards that side, right? If you guys don't know which weak side and strong side is, uh, it's something that we use as casters and I'm pretty sure the players use it too. Weak side in this case is Kelra, right? He's not a weak laner, no, he's a good player, but it's called weak side because Omega will try to play around that top side more often, right? Uh, because Esme Paquito is a winning lane for Esme in terms of just the matchups. So that's how that's how you determine weak and strong side. It's not I'm not saying that the players are weak. Don't get that wrong. Don't get that missing. Uh, people are gonna like some people who don't doesn't understand is gonna be like, oh, why are you calling Kelra weak, man? The, the, the setup, the turtle dance is very beautiful. Very good. That was a that was four v three. Okay, good one by Haji. They don't have Kelra. Yeah, Omega need to back off here. They lose Ryzen. That's it. Uh, good pullback from Omega. They don't gamble it too much. They don't try to go for that flip uh, in the team fight. They know they lost with Ryzen dead. Good backup and good, very good execution by Blacklist. Like Haji is well. Haji, very good pick there. He didn't even use the flicker. They have kill intent. They have one to all my Venus still prematurely use the cult altar. But the resilience from all my Venus was there. He managed okay. and waited for the right moment. And then they punished Ryzen. No, afterwards. they don't go bot. They, they tried to. Budge, I just set up so again. A, um, usually after an objective early on, you're going to see a lot of downtime, right? Unless the teams just go and keep on clashing with each other. So this is what we're going to see. Another just very slow i think for the next three for the next minute we're gonna see a very slow game none of the teams are really gonna go and commit to anything there's gonna be farming uh waiting for the turtle the third turtle to spawn once the third turtle spawns then um yeah mm, nice try haji Wow, they still won that. Oh, Kelra's here though. Remember what I said in the first game? If you guys watched it, if Kelra comes in to clean up, it's going to be good. He doesn't go for it yet though. It doesn't have the old. Ah, that's why he used it earlier to clear bot. Good timing by Blacklist then. But now for Hamas, with the cult altar, just even, you know, adds another layer to that Ube strategy that we know. And they held on so much, they forced Ryzen to utilize the chains, oh sorry, the, the sword. So he had no escape. Well, they're still going to force this one. Haji going to get knocked up, dodging everything that he Nice can. zoning Numenon Blast. Mmm, Kelra. And it split up very well. Very nice. Wow, wow, wow. They split it up really well. So Venus was on the opposite side of the wall when he popped the Blazing Duet, and he stayed in the middle just so he can dish out damage to both. And he kind of zoned Venus from 
from this position, right? Like, oh, look at this. Just look, pay attention on Kelra. Right? Kelra jumps in. He jumps in the middle here. So the is like, oh, I got to move back here. But if I move back here, then my friends are dead. Once he makes the decision to come, uh, you know, over to the others, it's too late. Very good. Even in these little skirmishes, the forced errors are unle unreal. Very, very cool. That positioning is just brilliant. 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 Kill. Woo! Omega. Barangay Omega. I don't know what that means, by the way, chat. Um, tell me. Broys, tell me in the chat what, what Barangay Omega means. I know it's like a... They made kind of a, They made a music video, Barangay Omega. Oh my god, Kelra gets the golden staff now. Ah, dude, can he lose on the Claude? Is it possible for him to lose? God damn, man, so good. Oh, he did lose in game one. What am I talking about? He, he lost in game one. <laughs> oh. Yeah, he's just so good, though. Kelra. I've been saying it since um, MSC last year. Not this year. MSC last year. Ex when he was still Execration. He got MVP. And um, he stayed good all throughout. He's always been consistent, too. Ooh. I think you wait for the second, uh, the wind of nature. That's yeah. for one. Mm -hmm. Maybe the second item on all wave Venus, though, so that they will have more shields. Oh, they're gonna focus on Edward here. Flickers out with the one, two, jab. Nice, nice down. gank there, uh, lane gank. And also, very good response by Haji instantly. Noticing that um, two people are top, they go for it. Oh. They baited the cult altar though, it's GG. Like, um, Omega will have pressure here. If Kelra can look for a flank here, that's exactly what he's doing? No, he goes for the bottom side, alright. With the bottom side cleared though, he can actually set up for a flank from him. He can flank. Knowing that the cult altar is down, nine minutes in, it should be still on a very high cooldown. Yeah, there it is. see, 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 okay. Attention, put your attention onto Kelra. Put your focus onto Kelra. Renzio's dead. But it baited out Oheb's ult. Look at Kalra. Look at Kalra and Chaknu. GG. 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 Oh my god, Chaknu Kalra. This, this team is pretty good. This team is, uh, this team is a bit too good. <laughs> oh god. I called it and I'm still impressed because of Chaknu. Like Kalra, I knew he was going to go for that kind of play, but Chaknu knows it too and he set it up perfectly for Kalra. Kalra got win of nature. Nah, this is tough. If you're a blacklist at this moment right here, 4,000 gold lead, look at the items. No, 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 no. Oh my god, yeah. Oh, so tough. Were so crucial in team fights, particularly because of the cloud all right? And not only that, what's wonderful about what Chaknu did was he flickered before the new. It's again small wins, dude. Uh, if you take a look at Renzio just now, his death early in the mid lane when he got kicked by Haji, it baited out two ultimates Haji, Way the Dragon, and Oheb's ult as well on the Wesker, right? So with those two out of the way, Kalra can have just so much, they can just play around so much. There's not really anything that can stop him from that way the dragon, right? So, even when Renzio dies there, it's worth it. It's very worth it. This time, Blacklist don't have that high ground that they had in game one. Because they only have the Beatrix. They don't have the Yeev. Good move by Kelra. And now... Omega are gonna end like this is good. this. I think this is the stomp. This is the st stomp game. I expected it to be the last game uh, with Grok Selina. Wait, there's nothing that Blackness can really do at this point, right? Um, Omega can take all the turrets. They go and freeze the waves again. They go for the Lord, and then they they just end the game with a team fight in the base. And there's nothing stopping them this time except for the Cult Altar. But the Cult Altar is gonna be bursted down by the Blazing Duet, just like that, right? If you use the Cult Altar defensively. 
you're you just it's hard to win games if you just use it defensively right you want to use it to dive you want to use it to create space to zone omega or to bait a few of those abilities and damage resources but at this point because they're so behind they can't really use the call alter aggressively anymore offensively anymore because they're gonna get bursted down that's just the first north push which we know is not game you know, omega is gonna take it slow many waves down below slow top side take it slow as well don't need to shove these waves he's gonna freeze it even if they push honestly there's not blacklist don't have like a sicilian so even if they push every single wave blacklist will be able to minimal minimize that gold lead from omega but they're not really gonna get that much crazy value like um unless if they have a sicilian free stacks but here it's just tough Previous ones were that good because he landed onto Ethomaps. Yeah, they're just gonna wait again. Discipline route. Don't need to go for any fights. It's not necessary. Thirteen seconds for the Lord to spawn. Ten seconds, and it's timed with that top side push. Renzio is probably working on a yeah push down there too. Renzio is gonna stay bot. He's gonna go for another clear. Maybe trying to cut. They're poking wise down really well. Into Max and um, Chaknu, Renzio, Ryzen even with a scythe. Then they go here. Kelra with full stacks. He's just he's gonna play around there. Haji's low. Again, just play around the Lord. Wait for it again. Haji's already low. They can't open up the map. Free Lord. Smart. Smart. Smart Omega. <laughs> Very smart. This game is kind of like uh, a bit more normal than the, um, the other ones. The other ones were like, holy shit. Because this one, Omega, they, just, they got the lead in the start. They don't let go and they keep on going. International, it's only just Oheb at this point. Eventually, oh my Venus will pop up, oh, will pack up a punch. Weiss's role in this game is just to use the lethal counter. You see, Edward, if they if the if the economy was yeah. different, if Edward had the gold advantage, he would have gone for the kill for oh. sure. Edward getting chunked pretty low though. So they lose I think Blackers might be able to defend this one actually. Here, but, smart Omega, look at the grab but Omega will take all base turrets. Yeah, they can't. They, they don't need to force it. Like for Omega. They can force it, but they don't need to. Just go for that bottom side turret. And then try to bait Blacklist out of their base again for an easy end. Because if they bait it inside the base, Cult Alter can be game changing. Just like game one. I think they, yeah, they, they know. Like they, they've learned from game one. Oh, that, that looked massive. Oh, they forced it. Kelra doesn't have... Oh, he has ult. He has ult. He has ult. He's waiting for it. He's waiting for it. Waiting for it. You already go. Please do it. Oh! Good defense, though, by Blacklist. Yeah. Oh, they still tried to do it. They still tried to end the game there, but... Yeah, Blacklist. Good defense. Good defense. Exactly. They waited for the right moments as well. They punished, and they also made it difficult for Keller to jump in. You see that there's a threat of the knockout strike, which is a knockup, and then the stomp from the Jeet Kundo, which is also a knockup. At the last moment when Kara went in with the Blazing Duet, he yeah, was that was a good knockup by Haji. Mm -hmm. To cancel the Blazing Duet. That's the thing that I mentioned, right? If Haji gets poked down before the team fight, Kelra just has free, free space. And Kelra has the Malefic Roar now. Oh, dude, why is this not gonna have fun on that Bauman now? With that, Kelra has um. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. All right, then I got s no. Not only are the it's just the setup game again, and Omega are gonna win it. Blacklist, how do they win setup game against a team with 10,000 gold lead? In terms of matching the lanes in top and bottom, they can't do it, I think. Like, Lilia's gonna clear it very fast. Fairmist doesn't clear as fast as me as well. 
Esme doesn't clear faster than Paquito. Paquito actually clears faster than Esme, but Esme can take those 1v1. So he just stayed there after the, after clearing. And, oh my god. It's a setup again. How they're able to do that is because they have better waves, more pressure in that part of the map, and Blacklist tried to go for the Lord. Mega punish. Very good. Man, what a play. What a play. And it's ob obviously Kelra who engages with a blazing duet. Look at this. Where was Kelra? Kelra pushed in mid wave, and he just jumps. Oh, with the sprint, with full stacks, with the ult. Say bye to the cult altar. And you know what? I said this. I said this, dude. I said it. Someone find a clip. I don't know where it is, but I said it in um in one of the games in MPLID. Blazing duet counters. It's Geek Fam. When Geek Fam played Claude in the draft or something, I said it. I was like, with Claude, you can actually burst cult altar super fast, and it becomes kind of a counter. GG. GG. Oh, yeah, that was just such a good series. Oh, man. Good series all around. Every single week, there's just good series. Even in Indo. Season 10, baby. But, yeah. I think that's it for the video. Bros and girls, thank you so much for watching. Obviously, go and click the like. Click subscribe if you guys want more content like this. And comment down below. Discuss. Let's discuss about the things that happen in this game. Uh, if you agree with the analysis, if you have a different analysis or a different point of view, obviously, we're all humans. We have this different um, perspectives on things. So just let me know. Let me know what you think. But on that note, thank you guys so much for watching. It's been Mirko alone this time around. And I'll see you guys next time.